Good morning, Zodiac. This is a collective singles read. I'm going to start doing now called the Four Pillars uh, daily. Uh, since it's Friday, I'm going to start. It's going to be the weekend read. And Monday through Thursday, we'll do a uh, daily read. And I uh, also have the Soul Family read if you haven't watched. Uh, it's kind of a collective read for manifestation and um, that I'm doing uh, for whoever resonates. Um, and this is the same thing. It's going to be oriented towards uh, manifestation, soulmates, twin flames, the journey, okay? Um, and I want to use the four pillars, which is uh, the uh, emotional connection with a person, um, the physical connection you have with the person, um, the mental connection you have, and the sexual connection, the four pillars of a relationship, so... Uh, we look at emotional, intellectual, sexual, and then lifestyle is what I call it, um, however you want to put it. Lifestyle, core values. Um, I just pull two cards for each and um, get a bead on where it's at. And I'll start with that. Um, right here is the emotional uh, person. So I'm going to try to look at this as if this is for super singles and totally singles, I like to say. If you have someone on your mind, if someone's in your heart, even if you're just crushing, then look at the heart spread, okay? Uh, which is uh, Monday through Saturday, two signs each day. We start with Aries Taurus. Today is Thursday, so it's always Libra Scorpio Day on Thursdays. And uh, uh, So for this, um, we're going to start by looking at your person emotionally. Um, and I want to get a beat on what they're like, so you can recognize them as if... Uh, where you want to clear the slate, you know, I like to look at it like you, you're, they're circling you and you're, they can't land because you've had something else on your plate. But right now, if you're totally single, completely single, um, they can land. And here we're going to go pick them up at the airport and we're going to have a little talk with them, a little date and get to know them. And hopefully I get some idea of uh, what they're like here so that when you meet them, because this wouldn't be someone you've met yet, okay? If it's someone you've already met, then it's going to be in the heart spread. <coughs> Excuse my allergies, are kicking my ass. So, uh, Temperance is a Sagittarius card uh, off of the bat. So, I would look for a Sagittarius moon. I like to call out astrological signs. I do think, uh, I'll, I'll actually point out the placements, but you always got to think more than the sun, you know, particularly with love readings of uh, your moon and rising and Venus energies, okay? Um, and with the Wheel of Fortune under Temperance, you know, Temperance is the Sagittarius card, and the Wheel of Fortune is the Jupiter card. That's why they got a Jupiter, they got a Sagittarius moon, this person. You know, this is your person. So right off the bat, if they know astrology, the moon changes every two and a half days, so it's not necessarily a lock. A lot of times you get their date of birth and the moon changes that day, and if they don't have a time, you're kind of fucked. Talk to me, I'm an astrologer, I'll figure it out. Um, the moon is very significant energy, um, so you could probably tell what their moon is. Um, uh, like it's going to be one or two signs, you know, if, if it changes that day. So um, between those two signs, it's not that hard to figure out what their moon is once you get to know them a little bit. Uh, but right off the bat, right there, you know, they're going to be a Sagittarius moon. Now, Sagittarius moons, I'm a Sagittarius. I always get along with Sagittarius moon never have one that's a lover it's like Sagittarius energy comes together it's like two uh, the positive of two magnets just repulsing each other yeah I've never once had a successful relationship uh, really with the Sag but we always get along great but it's more like friend brother sister type of energy um, here with the Sag um, but that may not be the case for you I don't know your science collective read um, but this is someone that the big thing about a Sagittarius moon, they're intellectually curious. So they typically will be able to converse because the moon has a lot more to do with the mind and people typically recognize. The moon has everything to do with the mind. The moon is the mind, it's the unconscious mind, which is most of the iceberg that's under the surface that we don't see. The conscious mind is that little tip. The conscious mind is not the one that sunk the Titanic. It was everything underneath of that little iceberg that they didn't see, okay? Um, so this person would be able to converse on probably any subject 
Um, they probably, you know, the person that if there's an article, they're going to at least read part of it, you know. Um, it can be that kind of energy too where they skip around a lot. Um, they don't tend to specialize so much in things. I mean, they're so curious. It's a little bit like a Gemini moon in a way. Um, so when you're with them, um, they typically are going to be bright-eyed and attentive and smart-looking. Like they have a life about them um, that you see. A, a, a light goes off inside of them. Um, and um, uh, you'll probably think about them it's just by looking at them. You'll probably think this person's pretty smart, you know, um, that kind of energy. Uh, now let's uh, look at how they're doing intellectually. Ten of Swords, don't freak out. It's a little bit of a different reading with the Six of Pentacles. Highly intuitive reading. Um, so intellectually um, with the Ten of Swords. And you know the thing about them here, emotionally I believe they're very strong. I, I don't, I see a pretty good childhood here which is kind of unusual. So um, you have a solid person here. Um, intellectually with the Ten of Swords over the Six of Pentacles. So they're very grounded with the Six of Pentacles on the bottom, but this Ten of Swords, we need a clarifier on that. Justice clarifying the Ten of Swords. <sighs> Intellectually. I'm trying to get a beat on maybe where their sun is. If they have a Sag Moon, sun could be anything. They might be a Libra here, I'm getting. Because the Six of Pentacles kind of Libra energy, see the scales? You know, and then Justice is 100% going to be your Libra card. Um, so the Ten of Swords. So a Libra Sun with the Sag Moon. You know, they don't go, they're well, they go well together. Um, air and Sun um, works well together. It's not bad. Um, but with the Ten of Swords there, um, it's... To me, it's classic Libra energy. It's like someone that really uh, try, loves too much and knocks themselves out uh, trying to be fair with the other person. And my guess is with your person, because I'm trying to get a read on who they are, and what, how they may act, what they might say, is they're probably going to tell you, you know, that they have a history of, of they feel, and probably it's true, giving everything to a person. Um, and then not getting it back, you know, and so they focus a lot on fairness and you know Libra's the one energy where if they if you love them more than they love you They might consider that a deal breaker pretty much every other sign would be like well good got a perfect, you know um, but they uh, they really focus on um, Reciprocity six pickles all about reciprocity here um, and he might even in the way they think um, this also is a kind of person and this ten of swords and they get them in trouble some people might feel that they're insincere because um, if you say and also with a lover it can be difficult because you know your lover comes from work and they're like oh this bitch was this and that and, 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 and instead of saying the right thing which is oh that stupid bitch I hate them I love you baby I'm sorry you feel bad they're like, well, they might say to you, a Libra, like, well, you know, they kind of got a point, honey. You got to think of it from their point of view. And so that could get them in trouble. Uh, they could get them in trouble with their friends because one friend might bitch about another friend and they might take their side. And then the other friend bitches and then they might take their side because they see that both sides are valid and both sides have relevance and they're not trying to be duplicitous. Uh, but people might see it that way kind of thing. So sexually... Eight of Pentacles, okay, it's the best part, Eight of Cups, two eights, wow, Eight of Pentacles and the Eight of Cups, you know, uh, what comes mostly to mind is a switch in terms of sex, um, they can either be dominant or they can be submissive, this is going to be a strong thing with them, in fact, they might like it, like they may consciously they may tell you, I'm a switch, and I really like to mix it up, you know. I like sometimes for you to be dominant, and I like sometimes to be dominant. Um, and they really want to be dominant. They take this very seriously. The Eight of Pentacles here in the sexual position 
sexism. <laughs> They're not playing. I'm trying to get an idea on the Mars and Venus here. Now, if they're a Libra sun, and I think they are a Libra sun, you know, they have a Sag moon. So again, these are things you can look in their chart. You're going to know who they are, guys. Get their chart. Um, and I love to do synastry. Uh, let me know. Um, so Libra here, uh, the next, uh, probably going to be a Virgo, Mars, I'm thinking. And um, they probably got a Venus and Scorpio, and I have this. So I think we're looking at people has a Virgo Mars, and they have a Venus and Scorpio. Now I personally, I'd rather have a Virgo Mars than a Virgo Venus. The last thing in the world I want is a Virgo Venus. Uh, but Virgo Mars is not bad. Um, the Virgo Mars, you know, I, my first thought when I saw the Eight of Pentacles is they want to please. They're going to be the kind of lover. They, they do the same thing in the bed that they do in relationships where they give too much. And so they're going to be all about you and all about your pleasure. And with the Venus and Scorpio, they're going to bring the kind of intensity to you like you've never, if you've never been with the Venus and Scorpio, like you've never seen in your life. Everything is about you. You are the world to them, right? They put you first. First. You're ahead of everything. You're ahead of their work, ahead of their children, ahead of everything, ahead of them. They put you at first. Okay. Now, this in terms of the uh, core values, Three of Wands, that speaks to the Sag Moon and the Hanging Man. This speaks to their core values here and um, lifestyle, I like to call it, the four pillars. And this is where I believe we have the best connection. If we have an emotional connection, that's good. An intellectual connection, that's good. Sexual connection, that's good. And our lifestyle is compatible. We share core values. Core values are the absolute deal breaker in my mind. What's core values? I believe in God. I don't believe in God. I believe in hard work. I don't believe in hard work. I believe in marriage. I don't believe in marriage. I want children. I don't want children. The core values. Um, this kind of thing. I, I think it's okay to lie, cheat, and steal. I don't think it's okay to lie, cheat, and steal. Um, so with the three of wands over the hanging man, guys, um, this person's been around a lot. I believe um, they probably change careers a lot. Uh, the, the Sag Moon is coming in to me. They get bored easily with the Sag Moon, and they need a lot of stimulation, intellectual stimulation. And Three of Wands is actions. It's uh, they may have bounced around too in relationships, but I think they bounced around too in jobs. They may have bounced around in places they live, and everything. Um, <clears throat> And with the hanged man here underneath the three of wands, um, I think they're the kind of person that really does look at things from a different perspective. Like you can count on them. Again, this, they get themselves in trouble because if you come to them with a problem and sit of kind of backing you up, um, and this is the Venus in Scorpio, it probably, uh, if you're going to look at their Venus, it's going to be conflicting with their moon. I tell you right now, opposite square their moon. It's not going to be trine or sextile their moon because they're a little bit at odds. The moon and Venus energy is a little bit at odds because deep down, they're just all about you. But maybe the way they feel that they're helping you is they kind of give you advice and it would be along the lines of, you know, you're not looking at it from the right perspective. And let me give you a different perspective. And it may not be what you want to hear because this is not someone that tells people what they want to hear. And this person is always... Um, game uh, for a change they they like oddball things so uh they if they're watching youtube they're watching uh, videos about uh, uh odd occurrences um it, it could it be anything from like conspiracy things um to uh you know just odd things that have happened um that are hard to believe that kind of thing um could be an interest in the occult coming um, that kind of thing. Um, they're pretty wide open too, I think. Um, so uh, they 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 probably don't enjoy the normal the norm, or the, uh, they might like like alternative histories and that kind of thing. Like they don't um, they don't really resonate with the the tried and true the traditional. Okay, 
it more like their Uranus is probably prominent. Like they maybe their Uranus is trying or sextile their sun here in Libra. You know, because they're kind of not afraid to be different, this person. And you may have some kind of unusual occupation, I get too. So keep that in mind. When they when you ask them what they do, I, I, I what they might say, I'm not sure what they're going to say, but it's going to be a little bit different. It, it's not going to be just I'm not an office worker, I'm a lawyer, I'm a doctor. I mean, if they are a lawyer, they're in a particular field that's unusual. Um, Indian rights or something. Uh, if they're a doctor, they do something unusual. They're a homeopathic doctor, uh, this kind of thing. Uh, I'm not saying they're a lawyer or a doctor. I'm trying to give an example. And whatever they do, it's unusual. It's not going to be a normal type of thing. So I think from this reading, guys, um, and it's a collective read for whoever resonates here, um, <clears throat> and I'm putting it up as a weekend read. I want to do this as a daily read. Um, but this is a great reading. If you're single and you're on a dating site, I've told people, get on a dating site. I know they can suck, you know, but it gives you access to a lot of people and get their astrological information right out of the chute, you know. I mean, if you're a woman, just tell them, like, if you want to date me, I need your time, damn it. <laughs> right? If you're a guy, give that a shot. I don't know if it works for us. Um, because you, we could tell a lot from the sinistry. And I think we're seeing a lot of the positions here. Uh, Sagittarius moon, Libra sun, we've got the Virgo Mars, the Scorpio Venus here um, is going to tell us a lot. Thank you guys. I hope that's helped. Please tell me if you meet this person. And I appreciate any feedback you have uh, on the new singles reading. Thank you guys.